Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, Hurricanes Don't Lie, But Climate Scientists Do. Data from NOAA shows that the number of hurricanes striking in the U.S. has dropped sharply since the 1880s. The red line is the 20-year mean of annual hurricane strikes in the United States. In the 1880s, the U.S. used to average more than two hurricane strikes per year, and now it's down to more like 1.5. This graph shows the number of hurricanes to strike the U.S. per year during the tenures of different presidents. While Grover Cleveland was president in the 1880s, the U.S. averaged more than three hurricane strikes per year. Tied for second were Rutherford B. Hayes and William Howard Taft. They both averaged more than 2.5 hurricanes per year during their presidency. The president with the fewest hurricane strikes per year was Barack Obama. And if you remember, he healed the planet in 2008, so this isn't surprising. And there's also been a decline in major hurricanes over the last 70 years. A major hurricane is defined as having sustained winds greater than 110 miles per hour. Major hurricanes peaked in the United States in the 1940s at nearly one per year. But since the 1940s, they've dropped off sharply, and we recently had a 10-year period with no major hurricane strike in the United States only time that's ever happened. This is the exact opposite of what experts predicted 30 years ago who said we were going to have much stronger hurricanes. Here's an article from 2015, U.S. and longest hurricane drought in recorded history. No major hurricanes rated category 3 or higher have struck U.S. soil during the past nine years, a new study finds. And here was another hurricane drought story from Scientific American. Hurricane drought hits a new record. A hurricane has not appeared in the Gulf of Mexico in almost three years. Jason Samenow from the Washington Post Capital Weather Gang was terrified by the lack of hurricanes in the United States. Jason Samenow, Capital Weather Gang, August 4, 2016. The U.S. coast is in an unprecedented hurricane drought. Why this is terrifying. A major hurricane hasn't hit the U.S. Gulf or East Coast in more than a decade. Wow, that sounds pretty scary. I can certainly see why Jason was terrified. But when we did finally get a major hurricane hitting the United States after the longest hurricane drought in history, the Washington Post of course blamed it on President Trump. The Washington Post later reported that last year was the first year on record with no violent tornadoes in the United States, but they definitely did not give President Trump credit for that. So for the Washington Post, no hurricanes is terrifying. But when a hurricane finally does come, it's President Trump's fault. If you're going to blame the hurricane on President Trump, it also seemed fair to give him credit for the lack of violent tornadoes last year. The Washington Post does say that the world is going to end in 12 years, however. The decline in hurricanes hasn't just been in the United States. They've seen the same thing in Australia. This graph is from the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. Yellow shows non-severe cyclones and red shows severe cyclones. You can see that they've both dropped since the 1970s. On Christmas Day 45 years ago, Darwin, Australia was destroyed by Cyclone Tracy. 90% of the houses were ruined and the city was left uninhabitable for about a year. The always reliable Guardian reported in 1974, space satellites show new ice age coming fast. Time magazine said, another ice age. Telltale signs are everywhere, from the unexpected persistence and thickness of pack ice in the waters around Iceland to the southward migration of a warmth-loving creature like the armadillo. The Washington Post reported, colder winters held dawn of new ice age. Scientists see ice age in the future. And the Washington Post also reported, U.S. scientists sees new ice age coming. The world could be as little as 50 or 60 years away from a disastrous new ice age a leading atmospheric scientist predicts. Dr. Rasool of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration in Columbia University says that. You better bundle up because 50 years from 1971 is coming up in just two years. 42 top American and European investigators met at Brown University and they were a little more conservative. They sent a letter to President Nixon warning of a new ice age in about 100 years. And Science News had this great cover showing glaciers plowing through Manhattan. The Ice Age Cometh. I started college at Arizona State University in 1974, and they had the all-time record heat wave of 18 straight days over 110 degrees from June 12th to June 29th. Didn't really feel like an ice age to me. Here in Boulder, the two leading climate scientists at the National Center for Atmospheric Research also warned about global cooling. 
Steven Schneider and Walter R. Roberts warned of food shortages. Underline Schneider's ideas on food shortages, the knowledge that the world is moving into a period of cooler temperatures. Australia had their worst hurricane in 1974, and the U.S. had its worst tornado outbreak. On April 3rd and 4th, 1974, the U.S. had 148 twisters in 24 hours. So now let's get down to the main focus of this video. A really interesting statistic is the number of June hurricanes making landfall in the United States. The U.S. hasn't been hit by a hurricane during June since carbon dioxide levels reached 350 parts per million. The last hurricane to hit the United States during June was way back in 1986, but they were pretty common prior to then. And in 1886, the U.S. was hit by an incredible three hurricanes during June, all three of them being Category 2s. 1886 was the worst year on record for hurricanes in the United States. There were a total of seven hurricanes, including a major hurricane which wiped the city of Indianola, Texas off the map permanently. Can you imagine the mass hysteria if we had another year like 1886? Climate scientists would say they're 100% certain that this could not have happened at lower CO2 levels, like we had in 1886. The general wisdom now behind the lack of hurricanes in June is that sea surface temperatures just aren't high enough. NOAA says the first condition for hurricanes is that ocean waters must be above 26 degrees Celsius, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Below this threshold temperature, hurricanes will not form or will weaken rapidly once they move over water below this threshold. Water temperature isn't the only factor. Wind shear is another important factor which prevents hurricanes from occurring earlier in the season. And as the graph shows, we used to get a lot more hurricanes earlier in the season than we do now. The first June hurricane in 1886 went from June 13 to 15 and hit Texas. The second hurricane formed two days later and hit the Florida Panhandle. And the third hurricane formed three days later and hit the Florida Panhandle again. Once again, think of the mass hysteria which would happen now if the Florida Panhandle was hit by two hurricanes in succession, particularly during June. And remember, these were not weak hurricanes. All three of them were Category 2s. And now we get down into the meat of the discussion. This is the temperature anomaly map for June 1886 from the Climatic Research Unit in England. The map's a little hard to see, but this is the United States and this is the Gulf of Mexico. And they show temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico in June 1886 being well below normal. So how did we get three Category 2 hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico in June 1886 if the water was cold? Remember, the United States hasn't had a June hurricane in over 30 years. And according to the Climatic Research Unit, the water is much warmer now. And that's the name of this video. Hurricanes don't lie, but climate scientists do. Assuming the laws of physics haven't changed since 1886, it sure looks like these temperatures are fake. This shouldn't surprise anyone. Phil Jones from the Climatic Research Unit sent this ClimateGate email. He said, we didn't have much ship data in the past. For much of the southern hemisphere between 40 and 60 south, the normals are mostly made up as there's very little ship data there. Cheers, Phil. So we know they're willing to make up data. They openly communicated to each other about this. And then they put out these very detailed maps, making it look like they have precise data. There were never any consistent standards to how these ocean temperatures were taken. Even if they did have data, the error is probably much larger than the trend they're claiming has occurred. These people are doing propaganda, not science. Prior to 15 years ago, no one even pretended to have good historical ocean temperature data. This land plus ocean graph from NASA is from 1998, and you can see they started in 1950 because they didn't believe they had good enough ocean data prior to 1950. So maybe Phil Jones time traveled back to 1886 and collected some new data, and maybe the laws of physics were different and hurricanes didn't need warm water back then. But the more likely explanation is that this is just fake data. And one more thing which is particularly disturbing about both ocean and land temperature data from NASA. This is the most recent data from NASA. The blue line is ocean temperatures and the red line is land temperatures. They show the 20 year period from 1880 to 1899 ocean temperatures falling while they show land temperatures rising quickly during that time. It would seem to defy a lot of meteorological rules to have a 20 year period of ocean temperatures falling and land temperatures rising rapidly. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. You could certainly get shorter periods of time with land and ocean temperatures diverging, 
but two decades just doesn't seem credible. But then again, not much in climate science seems credible. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.